if you will, just for a couple of moments, can you meet me in the gospel according to Luke? Meet me in the gospel according to Luke. I want to um, give us a word this morning, amen, um, that has to deal with the power of mothers, but not just the power of mothers and what it is that they're able to birth into the earth, but what we're all able to birth as a result of what it is that mothers do, amen? So this is a word in the house, not just for mothers, but for every single one of us. Somebody say amen, amen. And so um, let's stand for the reading of the word. We don't do that out of tradition. But again, we do that out of the book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter and the fifth verse that says, Ezra opened the scroll so that all the people might see it, uh, for he was standing higher than any of the people. And when he opened the book, the Bible says that the people all stood in reverence to the word of God. John chapter one and one in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We believe that when we open up the Bible, uh, that we're literally pulling our chairs or walking up to the literal presence of God. And so we stand to honor God's presence as his word is read. And so again, that's Luke, the first chapter. I'm going to be reading the 26th through the 38th verse into your hearing in the New International Version. Hear the word of the Lord. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. Verse 27, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. Uh, the virgin's name was Mary. Verse 28, the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Verse 29, Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Verse 30, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. Verse 32, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever and his kingdom will never Never end. Verse 34, how will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? Uh, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you. Uh huh, And the power, oh God, of the Most High uh -huh, will overshadow you. When it is that you don't have the ability to do, you need to ask the Holy Spirit to come on you. Verse 36, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to produce is in her sixth month. I'm getting excited. Verse 37, for no word from God will ever fail. Verse 38, I am the Lord's servant. James, I feel the Holy Ghost. I get excited about the word of God. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. For a couple of moments on this Mother's Day, I want to talk from the thought, carriers of the answer. You can have your seat in the presence of the Lord. We're not going to be long. I want to get you to your restaurant. But I just came to let you know, your carrier is not of children, but of answers. Carriers of answers. And so, Father, have your way today. Oh, Jesus. Holy Spirit, speak to us. Show us what we're carrying. Show us how to carry it. Yeah. And show us how favored we are at the fact that you would trust us to hold your stuff. Oh, God, inside of us. And so, Father, speak just so that we're a little clearer having come by this way. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Carriers of the answers.
carriers of the answers. A family throughout history, uh, the world as we have known it, uh, has always been filled with questions. Uh, the, the world has always been filled with questions. Human beings uh, are wired to be inquisitive. Uh, uh, therefore, they are always asking questions uh, in the attempt to seek answers uh, to what currently stumps them, uh, to seek answers uh, to what currently baffles them, uh, and to seek answers uh, to respond to a need, or they ask questions to seek out answers to propel them forward into the future. All uh, we would need to do to prove this point uh, is to walk through history uh, to observe the multiple times that God sends natural answers uh, through humans. Uh, all we have to do is look at all of the inventions uh, or answers, if you will, uh, given by God uh, and manifest through humans. Do you want to take a walk down history really quickly? Okay, uh, the light bulb. Uh huh. The light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison, but it was really the modern answer to darkness. Uh, when fire and candles couldn't illuminate as long and as wide as needed, God sent an answer, hallelujah, into the earth through an individual named Thomas Edison. Let's keep moving the telephone. Somebody say telephone. It was invented by Alexander Graham Bell. He was the carrier of that answer. It was the modern answer to faster communication. When handwritten letters slowed our effectiveness and our closeness, we can keep moving down history. We have the car. Uh, who, what, it was invented by a gentleman named Carl Benz. Uh, and he's the person, amen, that God used to bring forth the answer of a car. The car uh, was a modern answer to quicker transportation when horses were slower and couldn't always go the distance. Uh, and then we can keep on moving to the stoplight. Somebody say stoplight. It was invented by a gentleman named Garrett Morgan. God used an individual named Garrett Morgan to bring forth an answer into the earth. Uh, it was the answer to the challenge challenge of danger <laughs> that was created when the car answer came on the scene. Uh -huh. And isn't it interesting that oftentimes one amazing answer uh, will then demand the need for another answer to organize the previous answer? Uh -huh. And then we can keep going to an airplane, an airplane that was invented by the Wright brothers. Uh -huh. God used the Wright brothers uh, to bring an answer into the earth uh, to further transportation uh, when protos and people needed to arrive to destinations faster. It was an answer. And then God messed around, Lord, and gave us this thing called computers, uh, which shifted everything that we know. It was invented by a man named Charles Babbage. Uh, and God used this individual to birth forth an answer uh, to more efficient recording and the transmission of data. Uh-huh. And then then God messed around and sent another answer into the earth called the internet. Uh, it was invented by a man named Tim Berners-Lee, uh-huh, and God used Tim Berners-Lee uh, to bring forth a modern answer uh, to global connection uh, that has been the most powerful invention of our time uh, so that I can be standing in Maryland and communicate clearly with somebody in Australia. Australia. It's an answer. And the Bible itself is full of examples all the way from Genesis to the book of Revelation of God using human beings like you and I uh, as vehicles to birth forth answers to the things that the world needs. Noah building the ark was the answer 
to the covering protection God needed to house those that will remain after the flood. Uh -huh. God using Rahab, uh, even though she was a prostitute, uh, was the answer to the Davidic line staying intact so that Jesus could come in the right way. God using David, uh, can I just walk through the Bible, was a shepherd boy. Uh, he was an answer to finally have someone with enough courage uh, to kill Goliath with a slingshot and five smooth stones. And God used Peter, uh, even though he was impulsive uh, and would deny Jesus, uh, yet he was the answer to the genesis of the Christian church, becoming an anointed apostle uh, and performing miracles to supply the answers and petitions for the Gentiles. So the question for all of us this morning is, who has God used to be the carrier of answers for you? Yeah. Who has God raised up over the course of your life to answer questions that you didn't understand? Yeah. Whoever that is today, tell them thank you. Send them a text message. Call them. Give them a card. Let them know if it wasn't for you, I'd still be confused about some things. That's what we're doing today. Uh, uh, who has God used uh, to bring forth the protection that you needed mm -hmm. and the provision that you needed? Uh, it came from God, but it got to you through a human being. Uh, no, not the last time uh, that you thank them, but now when was the last time that you thank God for them? And as you see, God uses humans. Yes, he does. That's why he says to honor them because they're being used and their questions, their ingenuity, their creativity, their intellect, their compassion. He uses their love. He uses their errors and even their physical bodies to bring forth the answers to the world's questions and to our personal questions, needs, and desires. He searches for a someone to initially host the answer. He searches for a someone uh, to initially hold the answer. Uh, and he searches for a someone uh, to then be a carrier of the answer. Let me go through it again. Uh, because it's one thing to host an answer. Uh, but just because he allows you to host it doesn't mean you know how to hold it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he can trust you to host it. Uh -huh. And then you can be trusted then to hold it. But the question is, are you going to sit there with it? Yeah. Or are you going to carry this thing into the point that the earth is able to sit, eat, drink from it? Yeah. There's man, but then there's woman. <laughs> Next month, we'll deal with man. Today, we're dealing with women, mothers. And the difference between a man versus a woman is that a woman simply is a womb man. It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a womb man. Uh, it's, a, it's an entity that is different from a man, Lord have mercy, because she has a womb. Amen. Uh, there is so much power in wombs. Uh, wombs are the seat of solutions. Uh, wombs are the bed of breakthroughs. Uh, wombs are the vault of victories. Uh, it is a privilege, oh Lord have mercy, uh, to be created with such a special physical seat and be trusted with the blessing of conceiving a child who is not simply a child but is a divine an answer to a God need and if you don't have a womb you ain't got one and you need to respect those that do there are many women who are right now today desiring to be able to experience such a holy act because conception can never be taken for granted, as it is, in my opinion, one of the most miraculous mysteries of the human existence. Uh, how it is that a child can live inside another human for nine months. And the atheists don't believe. The fact that they can grow and mature and eat off of everything that the mother eats 
And the fact that then the body knows exactly what time, I feel the Holy Ghost, uh, to begin to birth that thing into the earth. Uh, and how God creates a woman uh, with the body to be able to nourish that child uh, with milk from her breast uh, for up to four years if necessary. And they never need to eat another thing. I humbly wonder how atheists cannot believe in God after seeing an invisible to the eye sperm make a mad dash toward an invisible to the eye egg penetrate its outer shell and then penetrate its inner shell and then plant itself and then all of a sudden you have a me and Kalana and Relita oh. Uh, and here it is in our text this morning, our text that's listed within the very first chapter of the gospel according to Luke. Since Luke was a physician by trade, the book of Luke is known as the physician's gospel. And ironically, we see him open this gospel book with two stories of impossible conceptions. Uh, the first title says in Luke, a childless couple conceives. Uh, but our particular pericope is titled a virgin conceives. Uh, we go from a situation in Luke chapter 1 verses 5 through 25 that is improbable uh, to a situation in verses 26 through 38 that is downright impossible. Uh, but we know that God loves to use improbable and impossible circumstances as wombs for him to birth answers and get a whole lot of glory. Here it is in our focal text that we see God finally begin to reveal his master plan of providing the ultimate answer to the ultimate question, which is how are the children going to get back connected to their God? Uh, I'm in the text. The Bible says that God sent the angel Gabriel, uh, who was known as the messenger angel, uh, to the village of Galilee to deliver a message to a 16-year-old girl named Mary. The angel appeared to Mary and told her in the 31st verse that she would become pregnant with a son. Can you imagine how young Mary felt when the angel of God came to her and abruptly interrupted her life? Uh -huh, and abruptly interrupted her plans uh, and tried to suggest to her uh, that she was going to be able to do something that by 16 she probably knew the way it was to get done. Uh, and God is suggesting to me that I'm going to actually be able to birth something that is not possible. But I came to let someone know this morning that an interruption of your plans can be to your benefit and to not be surprised. Uh, because for about 20 of you in here, uh, before the summer is out, uh, God is about to interrupt your plans. Uh, and what he's going to tell you uh, that you're going to do uh, is going to seem impossible for you. Uh, but it is the impossible thing uh, that he's about to tell you to do that's about to get done. Our first truth this morning is that carriers of answers are highly favored. Mm -hmm. But how? I'm a virgin. How am I favored when I haven't even done anything yet? <laughs> Watch this. How are you calling me favored? Uh-huh. When I don't have the resume that my cousins and them have. How? How? How are you calling me favored when I haven't even graduated from college yet? How? How? Uh, how is it that you're calling me favored uh, when I barely made my rent last month? How? Uh, why, God, uh, do you keep pronouncing things over me uh, that I feel like I don't have any proof to substantiate? Uh, but family, huh? This is the thing. Uh, the angel will come and interrupt your life, uh, not to tell you where you are right now, uh, but to forecast where you're going. A word of knowledge is about what has been. Woo! Prophecy is about what's to come. And so, uh, but some of you, God, how? How can you choose me? 
I, I, didn't, I didn't work for this. I haven't worked for this. I don't want to work for this. <laughs> but the answer to that was in the angel's initial greeting. Before he declared what would be, he started first by saying this. Uh, can you put it up for me, Laura? Greetings, you who are highly favored. And I came to let you know before God speaks to you with this interruption, you're already favored. Before you get the instruction, God came to let you know you're already favored. Gabriel, the angel, he was so smart. And he was intentional in declaring over Mary's life before he gave her the specifics. Mary, I intentionally declare to you that you are a favored vessel of God's. I started this conversation with the preamble that the Lord is with you. Huh? And if you all remember, I greeted each and every one of you this morning with that same greeting. Why? Because what you don't know is that God sent you here this morning for me to prophetically declare over your life that something's coming to you. And it's different from anything that has ever come to you before. Uh, this thing that's coming to you now uh, is the answer uh, that people are waiting on. And you don't have to have the pedigree. You don't have to have the finances, and you don't have to have the connections for this answer. The only thing you have to do is be highly favored. And the definition of favor is this, unmerited and unearned access and power. That's it. It's unmerited. I didn't earn it, but I got it anyway. If you believe it, just say, I'm highly favored. So now we know from our text that carriers of answers are highly favored. That's the way you were able to get the answer, because you're favored. And so when they ask you, because they're going to ask you, when they ask you how it is uh, that God chose you uh, and he didn't choose me, the only thing you need to say is not that I go to True City, not, no, I'm They're going to ask you, might as well give them the answer. I'm favored. Highly favored. Hi, highly favored. Uh, uh, so now, again, we know that carriers of, of answers are highly favored. The second truth this morning, and we're about to be out of here, is that carriers of answers birth greatness. I, no answer. We don't, it's not, we don't do mediocre. We can figure out our own mediocre answers. <laughs> Me and my friends can figure out something subpar. When Holy Spirit come on you, uh -huh, and when he overshadows you, uh -huh, what he gives you is something great. It's a, and, and so the angel appeared to Mary and told her in the 31st verse that she would become pregnant with a son. Not no regular son. Not June Bug. Ain't nothing wrong with June Bug. It's somebody uncle in here. He was a good uncle. But this wasn't just a regular son, Mary. This son is going to redeem the entire mankind. Give him a bridge back to their creator. Uh, not only would she become pregnant with a natural son, uh, but she was going to become pregnant with the world's answer. She would become pregnant with Jesus, who would be the Messiah and save the world. This was going to happen not because of the power of her womb alone, but because of the divine materials within the seed that would be entrusted to her to carry. Yeah. I came to let you know, ain't nothing special about your womb. <laughs> But we have this treasure in earthen vessels so that the glory is not about right, but it's about him. And God needs you to know that what you have already birthed or what you are currently carrying that you're about to birth or what he's about to interrupt in your life is not ordinary. Therefore, the warfare will not be. But 
however, Rasai, <laughs> I've gotten to the point in my life, Darnell, where I don't mind fighting if it's great. Now, I'm not wrestling with no demons off of something mediocre. But if it's greatness, then I don't mind a little tussle every now and then. If it is, God, that you're saying that what I'm wrestling for is great. And so that's the reason why the angel moves smoothly in his conversation with Mary. Huh? Because he wanted her to understand when the winds blow, yeah, uh -huh, and when the storms begin to rage. I want you to say to yourself, this is rocky, but I'm about to birth greatness. There is a greatness in this house called True City. You know I've been saying it for a very long time that the way that you know that there's greatness on this house and the way that regardless of what happens, Chris and I have to stay the course is because y'all look so great. If y'all were mediocre, we would have called it a wrap off. And the pandemic would have been a perfect time for Chris and I to have made an exit. And it would not have come on our ability or strength. But y'all look so great. The foundation of what God sent in this house baffles me. And so where do the greats gather on a Sunday? You could go to another church. There's some good ones around here. But where do those that are carrying greatness, where do they gather? And can they find a friend? A companion, a brother or sister, who when they talk about their issue, the person doesn't think that they're strange. Where do the greats gather? True city. So we have to give them time to get here. Because <laughs> they're still fidgeting in a religious house. So you got to give them a minute. <laughs> Plus, they don't know this is the house of the great. And I don't want to market that because that sounds arrogant. But Lord Jesus, we may have to figure out a nice way to phrase that so that they understand that this isn't a church. This is where the greats gather. Uh, uh, three, we gonna have to do something with that. Three, and we're not ashamed. Because remember, it's not, I didn't do this. I don't know what happened. I'm just highly favored. I don't. It's nothing different about us. I didn't choose what he did with my womb. But nevertheless, here I am, about to birth what the world is waiting for. Last thing, number three, carriers of answers trust God. Yeah, the message that the angel brought to Mary that day was unexpected, shocking. And from all natural fronts, impossible. In the midst of her exchange with this holy messenger, we see Mary become afraid. Mm -hmm. And we see Mary become confused. Uh -huh. And we see Mary become unsure. Uh -huh. And she asked questions. Uh, but when it was all said and done, what I love about Mary is that she found a way to trust God. And I believe what tipped Mary over to the trust God category didn't happen until the angel was wise enough and shrewd enough and discerning enough to know that Mary needed a 
a testimony to share with her what God had just done, not for someone that she didn't know, but for someone in her own family. It's right there in verse 36, the angel said, even Elizabeth, because I see you, Mary, you're looking at me funny. Even your relative is going to have a child in her impossible age. And she, who was said to be unable to conceive, is now currently at this moment, Mary, in her sixth month. God is going to send you an example that he can do the impossible. That's gonna be your confirmation that your interruption is on the way. And after this whole sermon I done did today, your tail better trust God. You're highly favored, you're carrying greatness. God's gonna give you an example of somebody he's already done it through. He's gonna interrupt your life and you're gonna say what? Okay, God, I'm going to trust you. It's the year of access. So, family, family, family. The theological key, though, to this entire pericope is the 37th verse that says, oh, God, mm, no word from God will ever fail. Now, let me help you for what we see happen. <laughs> we sometimes become aware of a word that someone has received. And Darnisha, they don't carry it out. That don't mean the word failed. They failed. That word can't fail. It cannot return unto him void. It must accomplish that which it was sent to do. It doesn't say who it has to be accomplished through. Watch what you're looking at. Because when a person falls, there's no need to worry. We're just going to have a different carrier. And as for me, AT&T, T-Mobile, I don't care. I'm just, I just need access. I don't care who my carrier is, as long as my line is clear. As long as I've got all my bars, I don't care what company carries your stuff and what company carries my stuff, as long as I can hear clearly and see clearly and connect clearly. But don't be one of the ones that was Hosting and holding, and then another one carries. You can say no to God, but you can't say no to his word. I wish we were in truth talk, because I would massage that a little bit. Because some of y'all think you have options regarding his word, you don't, that's arrogant. <laughs> don't feel bad, he told me the same thing. You can quit if you want. That I ain't stunting that. What is that? You're gonna miss out on joy and, and peace and, 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 and wealth and, 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 and you're gonna come back to me and, and you're not empty. And we, so if you wanna do that, that's fine. You not touching my word. Who do you think you are? <laughs> Every time I speak something, put it back up for me, Laura. That thing can't, that thing can't fail. So when you feel weak, his strength is made perfect in so you don't need to lean on your prayer partner. You don't need to lean on me. You need to lean on the, the word. God, you said. Oh, yeah, not my shy. 
Last Sunday, yeah. mm, the f last Friday, I'm just going to go ahead and tell it, of Bishop Jason's elevation, last weekend, I was at the Tabernacle at GBT on a Friday afternoon, 12 noon, last Friday. And my mother called me. I missed her call. And um, um, so she called Chris. And Chris stepped out. He came back. And I knew in my heart something was wrong. And so I got on the phone. I'm running out of the aisle of the church. I stand outside the church, Dominique Malone. And my mother said, your father collapsed in, in the kitchen. And so the ambulance is here. And, and they're working on him. Okay. So I'm standing in front of Bishop Jason's church. So my mom is on speakerphone with Chris. I'm on another phone calling to try to get my family, because I'm in DC, my mother's in New York, to my mother until I can get there. And so my mother is like in and out. She's strong, but she, I can hear in her voice, because that's her husband of 51 years. It's my daddy, but that's her man, you know? And so, um, and so they're following, um, she finally starts following the ambulance. Oh, and the ambulance stopped. And they, the ambulance driver got out of the ambulance, James, and ran to the back of the ambulance because my father's heart stopped. And so whenever an ambulance stops when they're en route to a hospital, they have to perform a resuscitation. And so I said, God, your word says. And so they were able, to get his heart beating after a while. And then they take my father to the emergency room. Now, I said to the Lord, while I have people praying, is this unto death? And he said, no. So I said, I'm going to stay on my assignment. I'm going to do what I'm called to do regarding my pastor. Because if it's not unto death, then I don't have to worry about it. Woo. And, and so I stayed on my assignment. Then Friday night, Chris and I rushed to New York. And when I walked into the room, I wish I had the picture to put on the screen. And I wasn't going to tell y'all none of this. I walked into that room. Every tool imaginable was inside my daddy. And I said in that hospital room, God, you said. And he was on a ventilator Friday. He was on a ventilator Saturday. I left my daddy, came here last weekend, and preached in this pulpit while my father was fighting for his life. Not because I don't love my daddy, but because God, you said that it wasn't unto death. So if it's not unto death, I might as well come and take care of the children that you've entrusted to me. When I left last Sunday, Dominique, I went home, took a shower, drove back up to New York. And he was on the ventilator Monday. He was on the ventilator Tuesday. Tuesday, I talked to the cardiologist surgeon, a little Asian man, he was short. He said, listen, we don't know if your father has any brain activity. So we can't do anything regarding his heart right now until we decide which way he's going to go. He said, because if he goes the other way, then there's no need to. Okay. I went into the bathroom of the hospital. I'm not going to no chapel. I went into the bathroom and I said, God, you said. And then the next day, my mother called me in the hotel room and said, guess what? Your father's off the ventilator. He's laughing. He's talking. He's bothering the nurses because not one word from God.
My daddy has lived for 76 years. I don't care when the Lord takes him home because I'm a real believer. I know to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. All I was saying is, you're not going to snatch no days from my daddy. That's, that's all I was saying. I, he's going to live out all his days. It doesn't matter how many those are. It's just you're not going to snatch no days from my daddy. I'm trying to prepare you now to be a carrier of the answer. And while I was in the hospital, in the critical care, intensive care little wing, and I would walk up and down the aisles, this is what God said one time. Why do you think you're here? I said, my dad, mm -mm. he said, walk the floor. I'll put your daddy in here for somebody else's benefit. He said, walk the floor. Because Shoji, I know the power that I carry. It's not mine, but I'm highly favored. And so I know that if I'm somewhere, whoo, that the host of heaven is with me. So while I'm here and my daddy's not unto death, let me go ahead and take care of somebody else. This is what this next level is going to look like for you all. We're going higher. Remember, we have next year, we're going to get through the tabernacle, we're going to get through the access, we got next year, we're dealing with all things faith, which Chris and I have been talking about this week, because there were some days, Dushana, this week, my humanity, and the doctors were like, we found a, a, a lump here, and his kid, they just were going from his head to his feet, and my humanity tries to say something. But then I said, everything Jesus did was according to their faith. And once your faith is intact, then the miracles of God can happen. And so 2024 is our year of the miraculous. So we have to get to the point where everyone that comes in the building comes in with a God you say. And this house of greatness, we have to do something with that. Y'all gonna back me up when we start calling ourselves the house of greatness and people be looking at us funny. This house of greatness is gonna become a house of great miracles. And as soon as they hit that door, everything that's wrong with you is gonna be right. And so, uh, Put the next thing up. Put the next thing up. Put the next, this is the last thing Mary said. May your word to me be fulfilled. Put the next thing she said. Oh no, the last thing before that, Laura. Before that. For no word from God will ever fail. Um, and so Mary's response to that was this. Go ahead, Laura. This is what she said. Pretty much, amen. Mary said, well, angel, this has been a very interesting conversation. <laughs> you have done well, Gabriel, with pleading your case. So may your word to me be, be fulfilled. So after today, your response is, may your word to me be fulfilled. And the good news is, you ain't got to fulfill it. I don't know nothing about cardiology, Jalen. I'm not no physician. I don't know nothing about kidneys. But I'm highly favored. And I've got a word from God concerning the situation. And so let the word be fulfilled. And you don't have to do anything to fulfill it other than believe it. Kalana, I think that that's a good, that's fair. 
And so, uh, everyone standing on your feet. If you feel like God couldn't possibly use you, remember Noah was a drunk. Abraham was too old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. Joseph was abused. Moses had a stuttering problem. Gideon was afraid. Samson was a womanizer. Rahab was a ho-ho. Jeremiah and Timothy were too young. David was an adulterer and a murderer. Elijah was suicidal. Isaiah preached naked. Jonah ran from God. Naomi was a widow. Job went bankrupt. John the Baptist ate bugs. Peter denied Christ. Christ. The disciples fell asleep while praying. Martha worried about everything. The Samaritan woman was divorced more than once. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was too religious. Timothy had an ulcer. And Lazarus was dead yet. Lazarus! So, um, So this is what I have to say to all this. Lord, I'm available to you. My will I give to you. I'll do what you say to use me, Lord, to show someone and enable me to say I'm going to say my will my storage is empty and my womb is available to many people that's your testimony that God can take over your whole body for his glory just one more time and we're moving up to you, Father, saying that you can trust to use us as carriers of your answers. We thank you, God, that you saw fit to declare that we are highly favored. We thank you, God, that you saw fit to declare, Father, that we have the ability, the strength, and the courage, the tenacity, uh, the unmitigated gall <laughs> to trust you and to believe that not one word that you are about to speak to us is going to be able to fall to the ground. So God, I declare in the next upcoming weeks and months that as you begin to interrupt the lives of your children, that they will remember the conversation that Gabriel had with Mary God and that their response to your divine interruption will be may your word to them be fulfilled i thank you god that you always send 
preparation our way that you always make sure that we're not blindsided God so that we can come into agreement with what it is that you desire to do through us in the earth and so father we thank you for mothers today we thank you for mothers that carried us into the earth God and we receive that as a prophetic sign that you have birthed us into the earth to be answers to what it is that the you need to happen and so father for all mothers that avail their physical wombs and their heart wombs and their mind wombs and their bank wombs and their patience wombs we pray god that you would allow them to feel love today and that you would allow them to feel honor today and that you would allow them to feel appreciated today god we thank you for the fact that they carried us this far and now we are asking that we too be able to experience carrying something to full term and watching it answer questions in the earth and so father i pray that you bless your people that you strengthen them god hallelujah i pray father that they will have the courage god to not just host and not just hold but to carry Help us to be a house of greatness. Those that know how to host greatness, how to hold greatness, and how to carry greatness. And so we bless you today, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen.